Well, good evening. Good evening. All right. So, uh, you know, sometimes when, if I haven't prepared enough, you know, I like to, I like to just, I like to just put, you know, there's one guy who I guess when he was preaching and he didn't prepare properly, well, no, he prepared properly, but he had simply said, uh, Jesus wept. And I guess it really, it just got so filled. This is a real, real, real story. The, the room was just so filled with uh, the, the knowledge of God and just the, the presence of God um, that they stopped the service right there. They stopped the preaching right there, rather. And uh, people were getting right. People were just, you know, coming to the altar, shed, shedding tears. And it was amazing. So we're going to try that, okay? <laughs> okay, I'll use I'll use my notes. First Corinthians chapter two. Chapter two and starting in verse one. Says, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified and him crucified. All right, we're going to pray. Lord, we pray that you would bless uh, the service this evening. Bless the preaching. Uh, God, we pray that you get in the middle of this, Lord, and God, uh, you would just, God, just reach down to the people's hearts. Lord, just. Uh, God, just turn us where we need turned. Lord, God, uh, Father, we pray for folks that that are not saved, that, Lord, they would give their heart to you. Lord, they would call out. Uh, your word says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We pray for souls that may not be saved. Lord, you work in their hearts to get saved. God, there may be folks who may be a little bit backslidden. I don't know. God, we all get there. <laughs> in reality... God can be, it could be from one day to the next, Lord, we're, we're really in a place where we ought not to be. So, Lord, I pray for folks that may be in a place that they ought not to be, Lord, that they would get to that place where you want them to be. God, you're the great mover. You're the great shaker, Lord God. You, you turn hearts, God. As the rivers of water, Lord, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water turneth it whithersoever he will. So, Lord, turn our hearts. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, a lot of you know Brother Arlen Hogg. He's up there in uh, northern Alberta there, uh, Grand Prairie. He's come here and preached a few times. And really, he's a, he's a good preacher. He's not called the pastor. He has said that uh, multiple times. Uh, could he pastor? Well, I tell you, he can preach. Um I've heard him preach multiple times, uh, have been up there. It's a, the church is growing without a pastor. And I'm telling you, it's because of a preacher. And people, they treat him like he's a pastor, especially the visitors that come there. And, um, you know, uh, he can preach. He can preach. And so I had talked to him a little bit about preaching. And, and he said, somebody had told me, they said that when you're preaching, you don't want to veer too far away into the branches. You want to stay close to the trunk. And they illustrated that as being Jesus Christ is the trunk. Okay? And the branches are sort of like these different doctrines in the Bible. And so he said, I try to stay close to the trunk as much as possible. And if I'm veering off somewhere there in the branches, you know, I make sure we go back, get back to the trunk, get back to the roots. Okay. Charles Spurgeon, he said, when he preaches, he always includes a hook with his sermons. And that is that he may be teaching on various subjects, but that he will always include an, an invitation for people to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. And amen, that's, that's what church is about, is we're trying to get people to come to the Savior. We're trying to get people to uh, get into the, to the family of God. We want to see people get saved. You know, Paul... Paul the Apostle, when writing to the Corinthians, 
we'll flip there in uh, the last chapter of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. He tells them to do something. Verse, verse 5, chapter 13, verse 5, 2 Corinthians. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Except ye be reprobates. And he had to ask this question because the Corinthians, uh, there was a man who uh, was bringing another uh, brother to, to court, suing, over, suing him over some sort of dispute. Uh, there was there was a man who was having an unlawful relationship uh, in the church that said it was not so much as named among the Gentiles. Another guy, uh, uh, there was there was envying going on, and he said one guy said I am of of, of Apollos, and I am of uh, uh, I believe Cephas, and one said I am of Christ. So there was a lot of division going on in the church, envying and strife and every evil work. And Paul said, he says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, knowing not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates, except you're not even saved, except you're not even saved. You know, uh, it, it would be funny. It would be funny if somebody had come in late and, uh, and the preacher, you know, they saw that this guy was, was, was very late. Thank, thank the Lord, Pastor doesn't, you know, come to me because <laughs> I'm, I'm late. Um, but if this individual came and, and the preacher said, Brother so-and-so, I saw that you were, you were very, you weren't just late, you were, you were very late. And, that, you know, that's fine. Things happen. But I'm just curious, what happened? And he's like, preacher, 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 uh, you, don't, you won't believe it. But when I was crossing there, uh, the road, uh, to get on to, to, get on to uh, Ellerslie, he said that this, 18 wheeler truck had drove through the red light and had plowed right into me and and ran me over and and it was a mess i rode my vehicle off so i just walked the rest of the way and i'll tell you it's a mess and and the preacher would say you're lying an 18 wheeler run you over he said we would know it it would be very evident that a, that an 18 wheeler ran over you you know the illustration was to was to show that something as big as an 18 wheeler run over you, it's going to be evident. And something as big as God get into the body. The, the Bible says that our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Something as big as God get into you, it's going to be evident. People are going to know it. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We're a new creature in Christ. And it's going to become evident when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, people are going to know it. Paul, he brings them to a list. He gives a list. It's interesting. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I'll flip there. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. He gives a list, eh? Lists are, are good. Lists to live by. There's a book called Lists to Live By. Some, sometimes a list, is, there's, a, there's a list called the Ten Commandments. Sometimes a list is good, you know? Keeps us in check. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one, no, not to eat. No, not, it's talking about a brother here. And so I guess this can be a really good test, a list, really to see whether, you know, how am I doing spiritually? And Paul said that if these things are evident in the life of a believer, he says that there, there's something wrong that's going on here. And we need to make sure that these brothers or these sisters, that they examine themselves to see whether they're in the faith. There's something very fishy about somebody who says, I love Jesus Christ. And meanwhile, you see their truck down at the casino or I've talked. I, I remember this one guy. 
I worked at uh, Canadian Tire doing uh, uh, changing tires and doing lube work and trying to become a mechanic. And I guess I had two soft hands to get it done. <laughs> so I said, go stock shells, brother Joey, or Joey, <laughs> they call me brother. Just about burned somebody's engine one time, so don't let me change your oil. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm there and we're, we're in the tire and lube shop. And, uh, you know, they gave us, they gave us these little, uh, these, these little vials full of liquid and you had to, these had, they had these testing strips and you had to put them into the vial. You tested the, the coolant, you put it in the, the vial, you test the, uh, 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 the oil and whatever else you put in the vial and it changed. Turns a specific color, it's indicating, oh, you need to change this coolant, oh, you need to change the brake fluid, oh, you need to change the power steering fluid. And so <laughs> I, I this is what they taught me. So I had I had no idea what was going on. So I, I go to the, the customer and I say, Oh, oh, look at this. You gotta change, you gotta get a coolant flush. She said, I just did it last week with you guys. <laughs> so just don't be don't be snaked into that. All right. <laughs> all right okay, well. Uh, so this this one uh, this one salesman for I believe Win Fluids, uh, Win Lubricants, W Y N N. Uh, he comes in and he's saying all sorts of stuff. And um, at the end of the of his spiel, at the end of his spiel, uh, he says, "So, anyways, boys, you know enough of the sales talk. Let's talk shop talk." And he says, uh, "You know, after this, after this." A presentation I gave you this little uh, crash course on our lubricants. What do you say we go get a cold one down at the bar? And he said all sorts of disgusting things after that. And uh, he went down the list. And I was the last one that he was going to ask. Not not for reason that he knew who I was or what I was about, but I was just the last one in line. So he asked the three other guys, and then he asks me. He says, "What about you? You want to go to the bar and get and get wasted?" And I said, no, sir, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I just said, no, I, I, I'm a Christian. And so I don't do that. He's like, you no way. He's like, I'm a Christian too. Right on, buddy. <laughs> Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. It says, by their fruits, he shall know them. First John chapter 3, verse 9 says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. And this is made manifest. Children of God and the children of the devil. He that doeth not the will of God is it's not, it's not of God. Jesus always creates a change in the lives he encounters. Always. Always. Go on here, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <laughs> And in verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given us to us of God. So it's saying here that we can understand the things of man because we have the spirit of man in us. It says that the spirit of God, that only the spirit of God can understand the things of God. Do we as believers have the spirit of God in us? We just mentioned that we have the Holy Ghost. Our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is given us of God. Yes, we have the spirit of God in us. Do we have the capacity to understand then the things of God? Well, John chapter 14 lets us know. John chapter 14, I'm going to flip there. And in verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. He will bring all things to your remembrance. So do we have the capacity to understand the things of God? Yes, we do. We do have the capacity. There's, uh, so, so really, we have the Spirit of God in us. We have the capacity to understand the things of God. Uh, how, how are you? How are you with that? With knowing the things of God? You know, how are you with knowing the things of man? You know, um, 
there was one preacher uh, there at Teen Lightning, not this last time, but uh, a few years ago, I forget what his name was, but he had given a test to the, to the teens and he had said, I'm going to write down uh, 20 questions. Actually, no, he's giving the illustration at Teen Lightning about a test he had given at, his, at their Christian school that he teaches at. And so he says he wrote down a questionnaire and it was about 20 or 30 questions uh, pertaining to, uh, to movies, all right, and video games and, and things of that nature. And so he said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have these questions here. And he written them down. He said 90% of those students had, had passed, 90%. And they had gotten a high mark at that, like A's, A+. Plus, and, uh, you know, he was, he was really taken back by that. And so he said, okay, I want you to flip your paper and I want you to number again. Uh, it was about 20 to 30 questions. And it was 20 to 30 questions about the Bible. All right. He said 90% of them failed. 90% of them failed. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 32, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be not as a horse or the mule which hath no understanding. Isaiah chapter 34, he, he encourages us to read his book. He says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read and read. So he says that we are to, we are to not be unlearned as the horse or the mule. He says that we are to, to be encouraged to read. It's actually a commandment. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It says to study the book, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we are to lastly learn of the Lord. Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. You know, uh, learn of me. You know, he says to learn of him. You know, so who, who, what do you know? What are you learning? Who are you learning about? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. You know, a man who has, who has a doctorate in, in, in you know, uh, uh, gender studies and <laughs> philosophy, a man who has that alphabet soup after his name, you know, PhD, uh, THD, uh, MD, and all these different Ds, you know, unless he decides that he's going to fear the Lord, there, there is no beginning of wisdom. You know, the, the wisdom of this world, God made foolish. He made foolishness. And wisdom, uh, the wisdom of this world without Without God at the wheel, I mean, look at the mess we're in right now. They they call it uh, they call it uh, pro progression or progress progressivism or whatever they call it. Um, you know, that's why they're allowing these specific laws that are that are infiltrating our society today. And you have the moral system of of the liberal is that. Well, if this person believes that they're uh, a woman today or, or, or a man today, uh, it's up to them, you know. And if and, and and they enforce those rules, they embolden that individual even to the tender age of like twelve years old, thirteen years old. They're teaching these things to these adolescents, and they're allowing them to go through surgical procedures to allow them to believe these things. That's abuse. Maybe we might have to, but the moral code without Jesus Christ, it's a mess and it is not knowledge. Wherefore, is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? He doesn't have any heart to it. Don't be unlearned. Read his book. Study his book. And learn the author of the book. Learn Jesus and be with Jesus 
and you will be rewarded. You will be rewarded. Acts chapter 4. Verse 13, first, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled <clears throat> and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You know, so many times I've, I've, I've gone down the White Ave and I'm just, I'm just, I'm trembling, you know, I'm being not trembling, but I'm anxious, I'm kind of just not really, you know, uh, looking forward to somebody just saying, get lost. or and, and it's not often that you get people really just being uh, in your face. But but there's there's days where I'm just like, even just to get a, you know, beat it. Oh, I'll, I'll break. <laughs> I won't. But, but, but I'm saying like, it'll, it, four o'clock, you know, quarter to four, four o'clock, I'm sitting there at White Ave., we're parked there uh, just down the street from Remedy. And uh, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, man, I'm just having a, having a hard go at this right now. And I'm not feeling it. Am I the only one? Surely not. Um, and I'll, I'll, sort of, I'll sort of search my mind, eh? I'll sort of go through, um, sort of go through what, what's happened that day or what may not have happened that day. And often I find what is contributing to my anxiety or my fear of going on the streets and talking to somebody, engaging with somebody about Jesus Christ, is that I haven't spent a whole lot of time with, with Jesus. And they perceived that they had been with Jesus. You know, instead of Jesus had said that, that he spoke not as the scribes, but he spoke as one with authority. With authority, I'm telling you. The Bible says, um, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And so not just with, with soul winning, but but in really anything. When I'm going about my, my duties of the day or, or uh, you know, I'm working at home or, or whatever, again, engaging with somebody at White Avenue, and I'm feeling that anxiety or just that emptiness, that lack of boldness going on, I figure, you know what, why don't we just pray? You know what? Maybe I'll just read it, read another chapter in my Bible. Ask the Lord to empower me, to strengthen me, get me through this. And not only get me through this, but to allow me to, to flourish in this thing. You know, it's, it's very perceiving to see what individuals are doing you know it, it as a man thinketh in his heart so is he it talks about how these things whatsoever is inside of a man it proceeds from his heart and so you you get around somebody and you start to realize what they're all about you start to realize what makes them tick you know and people they start to see what makes us tick and so when you spend time with the Lord, it's going to be perceptive. I mean, I'm talking about people that that they're just working their nine to five job. You know, they're not God called preachers. They're not doing some sort of what what men seem to hold up as some sort of um, um, position in the church that's revered. But I think about some men that when I get around them, I perceive that they had spent time with Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? I know that there's some men where if I was in a straight, I could ask them to pray, or at least I would want to approach them to pray. Sometimes I'm too proud and I'm like, I'll fix this on my own. <laughs> I'll pray for myself, get this figured out. But I remember two years ago, three years ago, and things were hitting the fan. You know, the Bible says that the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So I'm telling you, figure out who a righteous man is. Figure out somebody who can get a hold of God. 
because you're going to go through some sort of strait. You're going to go through some sort, sort of hard time. And then you ask that man to pray. And there's men that I know that, they're, again, not preachers, but I know that when they get on their knees, that they're going to get a hold of God. I perceive that this is a man of God. What do people perceive when they talk to you? What, what do people perceive? You know, uh, do they perceive that that you had been with Jesus? Do they perceive that maybe there's a whole lot of of this world when worldly wisdom that comes out of this individual when they when they speak with you? Do they perceive a sweetness? Because immediately Pastor Newman, he always says that there is always some sort of connotation that comes to individuals' minds when your name comes up. And so when your name is mentioned on the lips of somebody else, what do the hearers think when they hear it? Oh, that's a good man. Yeah, he helped me. She helped me. Well, I hope, I hope that we can be perceived as, as the, a church who lifts up the name of Jesus Christ. You know, I, I, I remember this one preacher, and, and when he preached, it, it, you know, it was, it, was, it was all right. But I tell you that when I, when I was around him, and when I, when I did hear him preach, he always lifted up the name of Jesus Christ. That's what I always remembered about that guy. He lifted up the name of Jesus Christ, and he had, he had been talking with Jesus. I hope that we can be a church that we lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor always said that he said he wants people to perceive that this church, that we are about showing them the Lord high and lifted up. Hmm? That's what we want. We want to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. And we want to see souls saved. We want to see people come to Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to be, a, 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 you know, it's said of the Bereans that they had searched to see the search, search the scriptures to see if those things were real. You know, they were more noble than the Thessalonians, I believe. You know, we, we want to be a learned people. Be not as the, the mule or the horse which hath no understanding, but seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read and study to show thyself approved and a God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed of rightly dividing the word of truth. I can't tell you how many times I'm so thankful when I go to White Ave that somebody says, yeah, but, but the Bible says this. What makes the Bible stand above every other holy book? Let me tell you. Well, yeah, I just I just can't believe in, in, in a God who, who, who would throw people into hell. Or the, the Bible doesn't mention anything about hell. Or oh, let me show you. Study. We're to be a study people. Amen. We're, we're done this evening. We'll pray. Lord, we pray, God, that you would bless. You would bless your people, Lord. God, bless them for coming out here this evening. God, thank you for, for being with us. Lord, thank you for your word. God, thank you that it is so uh, encouraging, Lord. God, thank you that it is... Uh, to be studied. God, thank you that you you have you have uh, Lord subjects that run throughout the whole Bible, Lord. God, that you you wrote it in such a way that if we search for it, God, we'll find it. Lord, thank you that you make us search. Lord, I pray, God, that we would examine ourselves, Lord, to see whether we're in the faith. God, there's something to be said. Lord, it's not wrong. I don't believe it's wrong for people to be tempted. I know it's not. Lord Paul, he even said, that which I would not do, I do. But Lord, I see there's a problem with somebody who wants to stay there. Shall we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So, Lord, I pray that if somebody, Lord, is just living in sin, God, living in such a way that 
Lord, is very apparent, God, that it is against your will, your revealed will, Lord. And God, you gave us some lists, Lord, that we can look to be able to see whether we're doing good or whether we're in the faith. So, Lord, I pray that we would continually examine ourselves, Lord. We love you. God, we thank you for all that you do for us. Pray you bring us home safely this evening, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.